Hey, good morning. I thought I'd give you all a head start on uh, getting ready for my class. I've got my palette mix to start a demo painting for you. And before I start that, I thought I'd give you a, a short review of the colors you're gonna use and some of the materials. So the first thing, of course, is gonna be colors. So I'm gonna show you my, uh, pa my, uh, the, my painting area and I'll show you my tabaret, how I've got my paints laid out and some of the materials I'll use and how I lay out my palette. So the first thing I want you to take a look at is this is my tabaret and I like to paint right on glass. So there's my glass surface that I use to mix my colors and then after I'm done mixing the colors, I'll take my palette knife and I'll clean up and get a nice clean palette again to be able to mix on. There's a palette knife that I best like for mixing colors and sometimes for painting with. And that's this kind of palette knife. It's a little bit longer and that can be, it can be variable, but it has a rounded edge. But most important, it's got a nice uh, bend to it. You see how that has a bend to the handle? That gives it a good, easy way to be able to uh, paint with it easier. So if you're gonna get a palette knife or you don't have this palette knife, you might wanna get one that's similar to one of these. It makes it easier to paint. I use this particular, uh, this is called a stretcher, uh, for stretching canvas. And I use it to be able to tighten my tubes up and get more paint out. So I'll squeeze, this is almost all squeezed out, but I can go, but go all the way out like that and get lots of paint. It looks like I pretty well did it already. So I can get a lot of paint out of there. Right down to the very, very bottom of the paint. So see how that just squeezes it right out? So anyway, I'll put that over on my palette. So I've got that extra there and I'll throw the rest away. I've got everything I need out of there. I sometimes even keep some tubes. These are empty tubes that I can actually put leftover paint in. So I have different sizes. Don't use them too often, but I, I'll mix a lot of different colors together. Tuba color, or I'm painting a really big painting, tuba color. So that's another thought you might want to consider for yourself. I've got a, a nice, uh, container to be able to put my mineral spirits in because it's got a strainer in it so that my dirty paint will fall out. So that's kind of nice. And then the other thing is I like to keep coconut oil uh, right by my palette so that if my hands get dirty, I just take a little bit, rub it in. It takes paint off the floor, takes it off my skin. I don't want to get that mineral spirits right on me. And even my gloves because I don't necessarily want to change my gloves all the time, but I get too much paint on them, so I'll just clean them up like that. So that's my preparation. Now, the other thing is brushes. This is the brush I really, really like. I can paint just about anything with one brush, but I like to sometimes have different sizes, so I'm gonna show you different sizes. These come in a pack of five. It's called a Pro Stroke. By It's by Jerry's Artorama, and it's a Power Acryl by Creative Mark, see if you can see that. But it's, you'll know it by the little red handle at the end, see that little red tip? They're very reasonably priced and they hold their edge beautifully. They'll be good for making the seagrass that we want to make, wonderful for making hair on a portrait, uh, good for blending. So it's just a nice brush for every student, whether they're a beginner or more experienced. It, they, they work beautifully. So that's the kind of brush we'll want to use. Put that over here. Now let's take a look at the palette. So for my colors, I try to keep it kind of basic so you have a good idea of how to mix colors. I don't want you to have too many colors on your palette that you already mix. I'd rather you mix them. So I've got ultramarine and phthalo blue, phthalo green, zinc yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red, alizarin red. Got a little yellow ochre over here because with a sea oak painting, you might want to use yellow ochre, it's just a shortcut. We can make it easily with these other colors, but I'll let you put that out just so you've got it. And it's an inexpensive color, so it's, it's nice to have on hand where some of the cadmiums are more expensive. Then over here, what I do is put some uh, more phthalo green here and, ultra, and some burnt sienna. And the burnt sienna I mix together to make a really nice dark green that we'll use for the sea oak grass. And if I wanna lighten it, I'll just take a little bit of this dark green like this. And I can take any one of these yellows, oranges, or reds, they're all lighter colors, and mix them in, and I'll get a lighter green. So I'll get a nice green that way, so if I want some highlighted greens, just give me a little bit more variety in my green. As I, If I wanna make it a brighter green, 
I can add more of the straight yellow. Notice I am not adding white. White will be fine if I want something in the distance and I want it hazier, but I'm going to, going to keep my colors pure, not add white. No, no need to, because the yellow is already light. All these yellows, the oranges are already light. You don't need to add white to it. So that kind of gives you a nice basic palette that I, that I use. Now I take each of these basic colors. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're not gonna count that one. And then I use burnt sienna makes nine. And I take white, and then I take that white, and I mix it with each one of these colors. So depending on how strong I want it, I'll mix it up, and that gives me a color I can pick up quickly and not have to be so careful about how much I pick up. I can pick up with my brush quicker. I won't get really strong colors too strong right away. So it gives me a nice breakdown. And it's great if I want to mix the colors together. So I take each one, there's my zinc yellow, there's my cadmium yellow, there's my cadmium orange. That could have been a little stronger. So if I took a little bit more here, for the particular painting I'm going to be doing with you, that could be a stronger orange. So there, I just add a little bit more if I want it stronger. And I'd rather just put them side by side rather than mixing it up just bigger. That way I've got a little bit more choices and my cadmium red to choose from. There's my alizarin and I mixed it with white. I got alizarin pink. Now I take the alizarin pink and I, and I mix it with the ultramarine blue and I get a nice, pretty nice strong violet that's pretty. Of course I can make it more pink, more blue depending on which one I use most of. And then if I take my phthalo blue and my I'm going to darken a little bit, cadmium pink, mix that together, I'll get a nice grayed down violet. So they're really quite different. Those two warm colors together, really grayed down. So there, there's compared to the two more brilliant colors. Can you see the difference on the video? I hope you can. So, and of course I can make that more blue if I want it more blue. There's more intensity in it. So I can vary it back and forth depending on what I what I add to it. There you go. So that just gives you an idea of how to get your violets, how to get your grays. We're gonna use these violets and grays in the sky. So that's a nice thing to have going. We're gonna use these nice, nice light colors in the sky over here too. The dark green over here we'll use for the grass. Now over here on my easel, I, can't, I like this easel because it gives me a place to lay my brushes. And I put a little tiny uh, can, tuna fish can actually of mineral spirits so that when I'm doing my wash in or if I want to clean my brush quickly, I don't have to reach all the way over another area. I like my palette to be right up next to where I'm painting so I can easily pick the paint up, put it right on the canvas and compare and have my garbage close to me. So I hope that'll be a good start for you to be able to uh, get going on, on your painting a little bit more confident and be able to have a better feel for the colors. Once again, this is my studio. Just to give you an idea of what my studio looks like where I paint. So I'm looking forward to seeing you soon and uh, happy painting till then.